everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. If you haven't sent for your picture of Lum and Abner yet, now's the time to do it. Every one of you will want one of these autographed pictures I know. They show Lum and Abner both in and out of character. Both as you've always pictured them and as they really are. Here's what one listener says. Quote, this is to show my appreciation of the picture received yesterday. I think it's swell. Talk about compliments. Everyone who's seen it thinks it's grand. If possible, I think I'll get even more kick from your program now that I've seen you as you really are. Unquote. And I think she's right, folks. It certainly is a grand picture of the old fellows. To get one, just write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger size package of Horlick's malted milk. Then send it to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. Have you got that? Well, we'll send you your picture right away. But remember, we have only a limited quantity of these pictures available. So send in tonight and avoid being disappointed. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. The citizens of Pine Ridge, who have received hogs from Lum and Abner's hog chain letter, have gone in together and are shipping their hogs to the northern markets. Squire Skimp is handling the sale of the hogs on a 10% commission basis. <laughs> As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner down at the Jotham Down store. Cedric is just entering after having spent the day helping Squire Skimp load Lum and Abner's hogs for shipping. Listen. Has Squire got all the hogs loaded up yet, Cedric? Yes, sir, ma. I, I seen him out driving together a while ago. He did? Yes, well. ma'am. Yeah, Mr. Lum come by there a while ago. And, and uh, he, he sat there and watched us load the hogs up for about an hour. Well, I do know. <laughs> well, oh, me, I'm sure glad to get shut up. Oh, yeah, the last truckload of them left out just a while ago. Well, them things have been a nuisance, I'll say that. Well, I bet I'm tired of both of us put together, Mr. Abner. I've been lo loading hogs over ever since daylight this morning. Yeah, well, that's a job, all right. I'm sorry I couldn't have been over there helping you fellas, but I had to stay here in the store. Grandpap had to go over to his place to help load them hogs he had. And Lom, I don't know where all he's been. He ain't showed up here at all since noon. Oh, well, I, I told you him and Miss Evelina was out riding a while ago. They, they sat over and watched us for a while. Yeah. Well, I just had a notion that's where he was at. He said when he left out of here that he had some important business matters to attend to. Well, sir, I, I wish I was one of them hogs. Wish you was a hog? Well, I don't reckon I mean that, but... I, I wish I was going to get to ride on a train like that. Clean from here to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't enjoy it so well, Cedric, if you know they're going to make sausage out of you after you got there. No, that's right. <laughs> you know, uh, Mr. Abner, how does hogs ride on a train anyway? How do they ride? Yes, Mom, they don't have to buy a ticket like other folks does, do they? Well, they have a ticket all right, Cedric, but they don't buy it themselves. Somebody else has to buy it for them. Well, I've rid on trains once, but I don't recollect seeing no hogs on there. Well, they don't let hogs sit up there on a nice green cushion, Cedric. Well, whereabouts do they sit, then? They don't sit. They have to stand up. That's what they get for being a hog. Yeah, but where do they stand at? Oh, they've got special cars for them to ride in, Cedric. They put them in cattle cars. Cattle cars? Why, sure. They don't let hogs ride in with everybody else. Yeah, but what, what they're doing putting them in cattle cars? Looks to me like they put them in hog cars. Well, I don't know, Cedric. I ain't no railroad man. All I know is they put them in cattle cars for Lom said so this morning. Said they had special cars for them. Well, that's nice. Uh, how many hogs did you get on your chain letter, Cedric? Why, well, I, I ain't got none yet. Uh, I don't think my name's got to the top of the list yet, though. I, I got started sort of late. Yeah, well, uh... The trouble is now there's just a few of us that's got all the hogs there are around here. And again, the squire gets done loading these up, why, there won't be over half a dozen left in the whole community. Yes, Mom, that's what I'm feared of. I'd love to get one back anyway so as I could break even on the deal. Yeah, well, we won't let you lose nothing, Cedric. If you don't get none back, well, we'll pay you for the one you brung us. Well, good. I I'll quit worrying about it then. <laughs> no, me, me and Lum going to have more money than we know what to do with. Again, Squire sells all them hogs for us. <laughs> yes, Mom, you sure had a lot of them, all right, more than anybody else in town, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just hope the Squire gets a good price for us. 
Uh-huh. Well, what you and Jamin on doing with your store here now that you've got so rich? Oh, I don't know, Cedric. I ain't had a chance to talk to Lom since we made the deal with Squire to sell a hog for us. Now, who is that coming up there on the porch? Uh, oh, it's Mr. Grandpappy. Oh, yeah, oh, good. <laughs> I said it was a customer. <laughs> Come in, Grandpa. Well, I never aimed to take so long, Abner. I... Had to wait for that truck to get there. Oh, well, now, that's all right, Grandpap. Ain't been nothing doing, no way. Uh, how many hogs did you ship? Why, 23 I turned over to Squire. 23, huh? I saved out two of the best ones for meat hogs. Fatten them up for next fall. Uh-huh. Uh, that's what you and Mr. Lum ordered, did, Mr. Abner. Save back a few of them. Oh, I don't know, Cedric. I thought about that, but, law me, <laughs> I don't want to have to go to all the bothering of butchering no more. I'll have enough money from here out to go to the meat market and buy meat when we need it. Yeah, that's mighty handy if a body can afford to do it. Yeah, well, Lom says that we'll have enough money to make us defendant for the rest of our lives. Yeah, you fellas ought to get a right smart from the amount of hogs you sent off. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. But, no. but there's Mr. Lum driving up out there in front now. Yeah. Miss <laughs> Evelina ain't with him. No, I reckon Evelina never asked him to stay for supper, neither. For if she had her, he'd have sure stayed. <laughs> Has Lum been courting Evelina today? Yes, Mama. I've seen him out driving together a while ago. Oh, Lum, he never passed up an invite to eat in his life. <laughs> no. Asked him to stay for a meal, and he'll always say he ain't got time. <laughs> Be saying no and pulling a chair up to the table all while he's saying it. <laughs> <laughs> and again, he gets that napkin tucked into his collar right good. He ducks his head and you don't hear no more out of him until he pushes his chair back from the table. <laughs> he ain't no company to eat with at all. Yeah, Lum's a terrible eater. Well, you can't blame him. He stays over at his place eating his own cooking till he's about half starved, I reckon. Well, look at that. He must be going somewhere. He's got his Sunday suit on there. Well, yeah. I wonder if he's decided to go to Chicago with them hogs. Well, he wouldn't have to dress himself up like that to ride with the hogs, would he? No. Oh, that's right. Hey, sort of dressed up this afternoon, ain't you, Long? Oh, I don't know. Not special. Just sewed on some old clothes I had around the house there. Why? Why, that's your Sunday suit. I know what suit I've got on, Abner, and it ain't my Sunday one. Why, here it is, too. You've been wearing that blue serge suit to meetings on Sunday for the last three or four years. It used to be my Sunday suit. My grannies, I'm going to wear clothes like this every day in a week from here out. Have a cigar, Grandpap. Cedric? No, thank you, Mom. I don't believe I do. Yeah, thank you, Mom. What's the matter? Are you mad because I said that about your suit? No, I ain't mad. Well, I just wondered you... Never offered me no cigar. Well, you've got just as much money as I have. If half of them hogs is yours, you can buy your own cigar. Oh, I never wanted none. I just wondered if you was mad, though. No, fact is, I was just going to suggest that me and you have a statuary made of us together to put down there by the watering trough across from the post office. A uh, statuary? Yeah, I thought it'd be nice for us to put up something for folks to recollect us by. Recollect us by? Yeah. Now, you don't think nothing's going to happen to us, do you? No, but I just figured us being hog kings of this part of the country, we could have a statuary of me and you standing there with a hog between us. I believe if you're going to honor somebody, do it while he's a-living, so he can see it himself. Now, you mean just have uh, me and you and the hog just standing there, huh? Well, either standing there together or us sitting down and the hog standing up. Or... Yeah, well, well, I'd rather sit down if we're going to do it, Lum. Let the hog stand. Now, Swan, Lum, you've been trying to get a statue of yourself put up somewhere around here as far back as I can recollect. Well, I just thought me and Abner's going to have lots of money here now. We ought to do something nice for the town. Yeah. Just make a donate of it. That'll cut down our income tax, too, Abner. Well, uh... If we're going to do something like that, Lum, uh, why don't we just buy a big town clock or something like that? Like that, and that's in the park at me. Well, now, that's not a bad idea. Oh, that's not. Yeah, I reckon we could work that in there, all right. <laughs> yeah, I could be standing there with a great big watch in my hand, sort of glancing at it like I just took it out of my pocket to see what time it was. Yeah. Might have old Eddard saying down underneath it to sort of inspire the young folks of the community. Like, uh, well... Like, there's no time like the present. Uh, huh? Oh, nothing. Now, don't try to get me to explain that to you. Well, let's wait till we get the money from the hogs before we start spending it. I mean, from Squire. Uh, how many hogs did you fellow ship, Lum? Why, uh, well, all we had over there. Yeah, I know, but how many did you have? 
Why, I counted up yesterday. I figured we had uh, twixt six and seven thousand. Yeah, that's what you said yesterday. I never count them exact, but I counted a thousand and then multiplied by five. That'd give me six thousand. See, the five I multiplied and then the thousand I counted. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Five and one is six. Yeah, yeah but yeah. what I'm talking about, Lum, how many did Squire load on them trucks? Why, all we had over there. We never saved back none. I sat over there and watched him while ago to be sure he'd taken every one of them. Well, I'm glad of that for Elizabeth just been raising her roof. They got in the yard there and rooted up every one of them snuff bottles that she had the flower beds outlined with. Well, didn't you fellas get no receipt from the squire showing how many hogs you let him have? Uh, didn't we get no what, Grandpa? Yeah, what, that? Uh, receipt. Uh, wait a minute here. Did you have I know. I ain't saw him. I've been here in the store all day. I ain't seen him. For squire. goodness sake, now you did it. That's a fine howdy-do. Squire's got all our hogs and shipped them to Chicago, and we ain't got no more ideas how many we let him have than a rabbit. We just have to take his word for it. And knowing Squire Skimp as we do, that's a very serious oversight on their part. Don't forget that you can get a big 8 by 10 autographed picture of Lum and Abner simply by sending in your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half-pound or larger size package of Horlick's Malted Milk. Lum and Abner want every one of their friends to have one, and they certainly are grand pictures. Just the thing for completing that album of yours, or for framing. They show Lum and Abner just as you've always pictured them over the radio. Lum with his famous mustache and his whimsical smile. And lovable old Abner Peabody, known to millions of admiring radio fans as just Abner. Above these character pictures appear the Lum and Abner of real life. If you don't know what the old fellows really look like, now's your chance to find out. I think you'll be surprised. All you have to do, you know, to get one of these pictures is to send in your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half-pound or larger size package of Horlick's Malted Milk to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. We'll send you one right away. Don't forget, though, we have only a limited quantity of these pictures available, so send in your wrapper as soon as you can. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick who bid you all good night and good health.